Scottish football is never boring, but it can be predictable. A game on Livingston's horrific plastic pitch is never going to be anything but a grim, ugly watch. Queen's Park will sadly never make it to the top flight, and most predictably of all, no matter how clear and obvious, any big call going Rangers way will be analysed to an extreme extent in the aftermath, with insinuations of cheating being thrown around liberally. It's said if you repeat something often enough it becomes fact, and in the polarised world of football in this country, the idea that there is some great conspiracy among referees to help Rangers is one that has been repeated seemingly since time began. With momentum currently gathering at Ibrox and a big old fun game around the corner, you can be sure that the moon howling is only going to get louder, so today on Top 10 Rangers, we are practicing our secret handshakes and diving into the X-Files to look at some moments that brought unjustified paranoid reactions. This is by no means a comprehensive list, and these will be mostly recent, but I'll throw in some classics where relevant. Before we begin, I'll throw it out there that I'm aware fans of other clubs do watch the channel. As ever, I am going to be looking at these incidents through some fairly blue tinted glasses, but if you can have a laugh about it, you guys are more than welcome. If not, then I take no responsibility for any blood pressure issues you might be about to experience. Remember to hit like and subscribe, and let's go. One of the key stats regularly brought up as an indicator of a shadowy cabal focused on assisting Rangers is the almost two-year run of no penalties conceded in the league. I'm assuming that that means the puppeteers must just take the day off for cup competitions where Rangers have conceded three penalties in 2023 alone. No, the 70-odd matches without a league penalty is categorical proof to some that sinister forces are at work. This stat however overlooks a problem issue for Rangers in that they offer far too many opportunities to opposition teams who seem able to create a chance with ease on the rare ventures forward. Take for example the recent controversial win over Hearts at Ibrox where after 5 minutes the Jambo's first attack ended in Lawrence Shankland brilliantly guiding a header back across goal without much of a challenge on him. It's pretty hard to foul your man if you're nowhere near close enough to. Those hoping for dropped points at Ibrox were given a scale when Todd Cantwell was played in with half-time approaching. Driving into the box, the Englishman was sent to ground for a penalty that on this occasion brokered no arguments. James Tavenier stepping up to take though, smash the post with the final kick of the half. Out with that loose moment, the Edinburgh side kept their discipline. No silly challenges and no flailing arms, just head it clear and reset for the next one. With 90 minutes played, new boss Philippe Clement looked set for a first defeat as manager when a late corner came into the box. The on-pitch referee missed it in real time, but thankfully VAR was on hand to highlight substitute Peter Haring's fistful of Connor Goldson's jersey. Hearts boss Stephen Naismith fumed in the aftermath claiming the block on Haring should have been what the foul was awarded for. The block that forced the midfielder to release his grip on the blue jersey. Having already missed one earlier in the game, the pressure on the shoulders of James Tavernier was immense. But the captain calmly dispatched it down the middle to tie things up with just minutes to spare. Not content with a share of the points, Philippe Clement rallied his players and the crowd for one final push. With 96 minutes played, a whipped Tavernier delivery was met by Brazilian striker Danilo who rose highest at the back post to head in a dramatic winner. With the conspiracy pot now bubbling away nicely, 
an almost identical incident saw it boil over just a few short weeks later. With Celtic having opened the door for the gap at the top to be closed by dropping points on the Saturday, Sunday saw Rangers travel to Petaudry to face an Aberdeen side that had been struggling for form since winning at Ibrox in October, but one who could be guaranteed would find another gear for the fixture. Positively racing out of the traps, the home side battled down the door from the first whistle and after 10 minutes earned their deserved reward. Skolder peeling off the defence to flick the ball in behind for Majofsky's composed and clinical finish. Rangers suffering an ill-timed hangover from Michael Beals reign as manager again struggled to match the opposition intensity for a big game. Every first ball, second ball or loose ball was pounced on by a red shirt as Aberdeen looked the far hungrier of the teams in the early stages. As the game wore on though, the Dons did drop deeper. Rangers would create enough chances to level or even get themselves ahead, but the goal just would not come. The failure to take the opportunities when they arrived against a well-organised defence looked set to end in a home victory. As 90 minutes rolled by on the clock though, all the good work of the Aberdeen defence was undone by another lazy tug in the box. Connor Goldson again had the run on his man at a corner. Sam Lammers again stepped in on blocking duty. And again, a firm grip of the shot of Goldson hauled him back in front of the referee. Does he go down easily under the contact? Absolutely. Does that make it any less of a penalty? Absolutely not. James Tavernier stayed cool under pressure again to earn his side a point that, although disappointing on the day, could prove to be a valuable one over the course of the season. In the aftermath, Aberdeen manager Barry Robson poured fuel on the Illuminati fire by stating that another late VAR penalty for Rangers doesn't look good. Following up on the last entry, it's not like Aberdeen haven't been stung before by some ill-advised late shot pulling either, but they appear to have ignored the lesson that should have been learned at the death of the Ibrox meeting between the teams in October 2021. The visitors that night raced to a 15 minute two goal lead as Christian Ramirez and Scott Brown punished a defence that had turned up late to start their shift. With 20 minutes on the clock, a James Tavernier set-piece was headed home by Alfredo Morelos to haul Rangers back into the game with enough time to rescue it. A stubborn Aberdeen defence though, to their credit, kept the threat level to a minimum, despite the onslaught the home fans expected. With time slipping away and only 10 minutes left to play, James Tavernier clipped a long ball over the top of the defence. Fashion Sakala coming in on the blind side of David Bates got there first and hit the deck, prompting John Beaton to point to the spot. I'll say this now, I will fully admit at first glance this one looks extremely soft, especially for the pre-Val days, but the replays confirmed what the ref had seen. A desperate Bates caught under the ball, grabbing hold of the striker in any way he could to prevent him reaching the ball. It should come as no surprise at this stage, but James Tavernier once more delivered from 12 yards to prevent defeat. Of course, rather than ensuring it wouldn't happen again by acknowledging his side's naivety and drilling it into them to not grab jerseys in the box, the Aberdeen manager of the time, Stephen Glass, instead blasted the decision from the ref, like everyone else does. Contrary to the current noise that would suggest Rangers were running away with the league with a helping hand from the refs, the decision that has had the largest bearing on this season's race thus far, in my opinion, was the one to chop off Kamar Roof's opening goal of the season's first Old Firm derby. To 
anyone that has played or even watched the game, Cyril Dessel stepping in to nick the ball from the Celtic centre-back was a striker capitalising on a defender wanting too many touches. As Rangers would famously find out against Dortmund during the Europa League adventure of 2022 though, the bizarre wording of the rule regarding interfering with a player in the process of kicking the ball means technically it is a foul. It shouldn't be, but it is. For another example of the battle between rules and common sense, we're looking back at the January 2010 one-all draw between the Glasgow Giants. With the game goalless, a first half Barry Robson set piece eventually found its way to Marc Antoine Fortuny leaping the highest. The strikers jump though, as impressive as it was to get entirely above Alan McGregor, does make contact with the keeper's arms first in the process of reaching for the ball. It's minimal, but with the extreme protection goalkeepers enjoy, the goal was harshly disallowed. The game would finish 1-0 thanks to late headers at either end from Scott McDonald and Lee McCulloch, but all the talk in the autopsy was about the decision to rule out Fortune's header. Now here's where it gets interesting for the conspiracy theorists. That decision came from Celtic fan Steve Conroy, who later admitted his intervention came through gritted teeth. At least that's what the stonecutters told him to say. Okay, so we've had something different to change the pace up a bit. Now back to supposedly dodgy recent penalty to Rangers incidents. Hibs at Easter Road, no matter the form, is a potential banana skin fixture, with both old firm sides dropping their fair share of points in Leith. In December 2021, it was Rangers who looked set for a slip up as a game that had raced from end to end appeared to be reaching its conclusion still deadlocked. That is until, with 10 minutes to play, Ryan Kent finally isolated his man at the edge of the box. The winger stepped inside but hit the ground before he could get a shot off. A shot that would likely have hit the stand, but that's beside the point. After taking a long, long look at the incident, John Beaton blew for a penalty, sending Hibs defender Ryan Porteous apoplectic. The defender's reaction was likely mirrored by ex-Celtic striker John Hartson, who couldn't help himself from the usual implications. To be fair though, if anyone has a right to think Rangers have the officials in their back pocket, it probably is Hartson, but on this occasion, Kent's foot was clearly clipped sending him to ground, and the wink wink nudge nudge comment was about a perfectly legitimate penalty. Now, there's a shock. Interestingly, this time it was Kamar roof-handed responsibility, and his cool penalty would see Rangers head back to Glasgow with all three points. Another decision that is either the best or worst you've ever seen, depending on how you look at it, would be the penalty awarded to Kurt Broadfoot in a blazing second half comeback at Celtic Park. The first derby of the 2010-2011 season had Blockbuster written all over it as both teams came in boasting 100% league records after 8 games each. With referee Willie Collum handed his first ever old firm clash, the players did not make it an easy afternoon for him. The man who would be at the centre of the takeaway scandal Broadfoot himself playing the entire game as a substitute after Anthony Stokes put Sasa Papach out the game in the very first minute. With halftime approaching on a real full-on, full-blooded derby first half, a late barrage of Celtic set pieces ended in Gary Hooper scoring with the final kick to send the home team in one up at the break. In the second 45, Rangers rallied. A Kyle Lafferty, Glenn Leuven's ricochet combination tying things up at 1 1 before Kenny Miller connected sweetly with a brilliant volley to put Rangers ahead with 55 minutes played. 
with the visitors on course to land a first blow in a title race that would eventually go all the way to the wire, a contentious decision would have a major impact. Kirk Broadfoot taking the ball down into the box pushed it past Daniel Majstorovic and upon feeling the slightest contact went down dramatically. Willie Collum on the half turn sees Broadfoot go down and immediately points to the spot. Depending on your point of view, either the referee has been conned and guessed or Collum had just pulled off what I'd describe as the overhead kick of refereeing. Kenny Miller stepped up to fire an unstoppable spot kick past Fraser Forster for the game's final goal, sealing a brace for himself and the victory that pushed Rangers out in front of the top. The post-match reaction to Willie Collum's Derby debut was ferocious. The official would receive death threats as Celtic already in the midst of a fight with the governing body that would lead to a referee strike within the month would again seek clarification for, in the words of Neil Lennon, strange decisions that had gone against them. Facing accusations of diving, Kirk Broadfoot in a stance he'd maintain years later insisted there was contact and it was a stone waller. Personally, I'd put it into the soft but seen them given category, including later that same season. For some reason, that one was forgotten about though, and I can't remember why. Just three days after extra time glory against Braga in the Europa League, the 2021-2022 Scottish Cup semi-final clash between Rangers and Celtic would again test the legs, lungs, hearts and minds of a team who seemed to be playing on pure adrenaline at the time. With Ange Postacoglu's side being much praised for the demand and tempo they forced teams to match in and out of possession, the expectation was that the longer the game went on, the more likely Celtic would begin to dominate. Rangers though had tailored their approach to the energy sapping style. In possession, the ball was patiently recycled along the back line from side to side inviting green and white jerseys to come and chase, slowly working their way up the park at a leisurely pace with the simple pass. Rangers were in no real rush to go anywhere or make any potentially draining runs. Out of possession, it would be an equally simple yet very different approach. If Celtic forced a turnover, it was Greyhounds after a rabbit to make contact early. Snapping into challenges within seconds of losing it, if the ball was there to be won, Rangers won it. If it wasn't, well, then they just foul them anyway. Before I go any further, let me first say this of match official Bobby Madden. He refereed the game in the way he always did, and that was loosely. It can work against you when a Kelly midfielder is on his eighth warning at Rugby Park, but on that afternoon, there's no getting away from it. The official refereeing the game like a derby and keeping his cards in his pocket benefited Rangers. I, quite predictably I suppose if you're a believer, thought Bobby Madden was a great choice for big games. However, former Celtic striker Chris Sutton disagreed. Outlandishly branding it as the worst refereeing performance he'd seen in Scotland in some time, and despite there being no big calls of which to speak, claimed Madden had embarrassed himself. Bit rich coming from Sutton, but we'll get there. Rangers' effective game plan was almost thrown out of the window with an hour played when left-back Greg Taylor fired the ball past John McLaughlin to put his team ahead. Thankfully, the response would be swift. Within moments of coming off the bench, perennial super sub Scott Arfield popped up with a brilliant finish to level the game at 1-0. With the massive psychological boost taken from getting back on terms, Rangers quite miraculously began to come on the stronger of the teams. 
Even when dragged back into the deep waters of extra time, they'd continue to battle through the fatigue to put the supposedly fresher side on the back foot. With a penalty shootout looming ever closer, Calvin Bassey's driving run in the overlap passed substitute James Forrest en route to forcing the Starfelt own goal that sent Rangers through to the final. As touched on in the last entry, in the supposed conspiracy among officials to help Rangers out at any given opportunity, Bobby Madden was long considered a key figure. Of the few notable old firm decisions thrust his way however, the decision to send off Neil Beaton in the January 2021 edition of the fixture was unquestionably the correct one. Coming into the game, Rangers were undefeated in the league and looking to extend their cushion at the top to a massive 19 points. With Celtic in the last chance saloon stage of their attempts to win a 10th consecutive title, we were told for years was a given. They were the team who pushed the pace in the early going. Nothing but the very best of Alan McGregor kept Rangers in it during the frantic first 45. It was one-way traffic with all roads leading to the stopper who was putting in the performance of his life to keep things level. After surviving the first half siege, Rangers began to find gaps during the second as green and white bodies continued to fly forward. With an hour played, James Tavernier's simple direct ball put in Alfredo Morelos racing down the channel towards goal. With nobody between him and the keeper, midfielder deployed at centre half near beaten desperately hauled the Buffalo to the floor. For the denial of a goal scoring opportunity, Bobby Madden produced a straight red for the Israeli. The case was argued that Christopher Ayer was there to cover, but if we freeze just where Morelos is fouled, unless he's the flash, he is never making up that ground. Adding injury to injury, just minutes later a corner sent into the Celtic box was nodded into his own net by captain Callum McGregor for the game's only goal. Rangers all but wrapping up the title with old firm victory despite not even managing a shot on target. Never one to take defeat graciously, Neil Lennon blasted Madden in the aftermath. Using the easily debunked Ayer defence, the manager insisted Celtic had been, and I quote, done by a poor refereeing decision. Continuing on from our last entry, nobody who spent any time watching Scottish football over the last 20 or so years could find themselves in the least bit surprised by Neil Lennon blaming Madden, given his previous outbursts as a manager or his aggression towards officials during his playing days. For the most volatile example, we need to look back to the first derby of the 2005-2006 season. A game that came to life 24 minutes in after Alan Thompson flew in off the ground at full speed to scythe down Nacho Novo in the centre circle. The Celtic reactions afterwards suggest they expected a caution, but the challenge had been a potential leg breaker that left referee Stuart Dougal little choice but to reach for the red. An outstanding Dado Purcell volley opened the scoring before half-time and after Thomas Buffell's composed finish through the legs of Arthur Boric five minutes after the restart, Rangers appeared to be cruising. With ten minutes to play though, Ian Murray challenged with the wrong leg in the box, allowing Sean Maloney the chance to go to ground. Thankfully, after Maloney brought the ten men of Celtic back into it, a softish looking award at the other end for Purcell allowed Novo to seal a 3-1 victory. When it came time for the post-match handshakes, the future Celtic manager lost all composure and put himself right in the referee's face. 
his meltdown earning him just a three-match ban despite physically confronting the officials. Our number one entry sees not an individual decision, but an entire team's integrity called into question. The most competitive title race Scottish football has ever seen was coming to a close in May 2003. Approaching the final hurdle, both sides of the old firm were level on a highly impressive 94 points and locked together at the top by an identical goal difference. Rangers, by the virtue of a single extra goal scored, held the narrowest of advantages, but in essence, there would be a straight shootout between Rangers at home to Dunfermline and Celtic away to Kilmarnock. It would be Rangers to draw first blood on the final day as Michael Moles turned to get a shot off, opening the scoring with just two minutes on the clock. With thoughts immediately turning to grabbing another though, Ibrox was sent into a state of stunned silence after 11 minutes by a rocket of a strike from Dunfermline midfielder Jason Dare. The pendulum swung back towards Ibrox five minutes later when Claudio Kanija found the corner, but along the motorway, Chris Sutton got the ball rolling for Celtic at Rugby Park. After an overhit cross, some fine work by Lorenzo Amoruso got the ball back in for Shota Avaladze to make it 3-1, but Sutton making it a brace on the day sent both teams in at half-time still tied together. Having already put in a contender for the May Goal of the Month award, Dunfermline would have added another but for an agile stop from Stefan Kloss to deny Craig Brewster. If you are unfamiliar with where this story is going, you might be wondering why I mentioned a mere shot on target, but we'll get there. With 54 minutes played, an Alan Thompson penalty made it advantage Celtic, but it would be back in Rangers hands when Ronald de Boer met a set piece flush to bring the goal difference level once more. After some tremendous wide play from Neil McCann, Stephen Thompson bundled a fifth over the line to give his side the narrowest of leads. As difficult as it might be for some to believe, Celtic were awarded a second penalty at Kelly, but Alan Thompson croaked under pressure and found only the stand. They would though get back on even footing through Stylian Petrov in the closing stages. With the season's last seconds ticking away, it became the most important next goals the winner scenario in history. Neil McCann's driving run was unfairly brought to a halt in the box, and as Ibrox held its breath, Mikel Arteta stroked home the stoppage time penalty that would seal an incredible title for Rangers by a goal. Both teams had given everything over an unbelievable campaign. Rangers won out in the end and went on to claim a treble the following week, while Celtic, for their part, would push Rangers all the way while going on a pretty spectacular European run to extra time defeat in the UEFA Cup final, losing only to Jose Mourinho's Porto. When asked to reflect on the season though, Chris Sutton chose to brand it a hollow victory for Rangers. Despite the inconvenient plot hole of the pals actually scoring at Ibrox, the Englishman accused Dunfermline of lying down under Rangers daft boss Jimmy Calderwood. The Celtic man, rather than accept a defeat there was no shame in, instead opted to bring shame on himself with accusations of cheating. In 2023, it's a lesson Scottish football doesn't seem to want to learn from.